This is part 61 of Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to get value from a control that is present inside an item template of a Grid View template field column. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. We'll be using these two tables in this demo, products and product details. Products table contain the basic information about products, that is their ID, name and price. And product details table contain the detailed information about products. Product ID in this table is a foreign key referencing ID column from products table. So based on these two tables, we want to design an ASP.NET web application project with two web forms. The first web form is going to be products.aspx page, which is going to display all these products inside a grid view control. And the first column within the grid view control should be a template field. And within that template field, we want to have a link button control, which is going to be clickable. And then the link button should display product ID. Now, for example, when I click on product ID 1, then the user should be redirected to another page, which is productdetails.aspx, passing the ID of the product on which the user has clicked. And on productdetails.aspx page, we should then display the detailed information about that specific product. So let's see how to achieve this. So obviously, the first step here is to create these two tables, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script to create those tables. And the next thing that we need to do is write the required stored procedures to retrieve data from products table and product details table, which also I have already done. So here we have the stored procedure. So the first stored procedure here is going to retrieve ID name price columns from products table. So that is pretty straightforward. And then this stored procedure right here is going to retrieve product details by ID. So basically when we pass the product ID to the product details page, we should get the detailed information about that product by ID. So this is what is the stored procedure which is going to return that data. So notice this stored procedure has got ID parameter. And then within the stored procedure, we are joining products table with product details table and then selecting all the columns from both the tables. And then finally, we are filtering based on the product ID that gets passed to this stored procedure. So we have those two stored procedures as well. So let's actually go ahead and create these procedures now. And now let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. All I have done so far is included the connection string to our sample database. So to this project, let's add a new web form and let's name it products.aspx. And on this web form, we need a grid view control. So let's drag and drop a grid view control. So that should be present under the data tab. And then the first thing that we are going to do is auto, we are going to turn off auto generate columns. Okay. So now within this grid view control, you know, the first field should be a template field. So let's include the columns element. And inside that, we are going to have a template field. And for this template field, the header text is going to be ID. And within the template field, we are going to have item template. And inside that, we want a link button because that's what is going to display the product ID. So let's drag and drop link button there. Okay. And then we also want two more bound fields. So to display the name and price. So let's go ahead and include bound fields. And we need to specify header text. So header text is going to be name. And another thing that we need to specify is the data field. So data field is also going to be name. So basically, this is the stored procedure which is going to return the data for the first grid view control. And if you look at the column name, it's uh, name. And for price, it's price. And for ID, it is ID. So we are going to have another bound field. And header text here is going to be price. And for this one, data field is going to be price. Now, if you look at the template field right here, we need to bind this link button to the value that is present in this column, right? So here, the text of this link button is going to be bound to so angle brackets percentage hash. 
So we are going to use this eval method and then say we want the ID, I mean text property to be bound to the value that is present in the ID column of the data source. Okay, and then once we click this link button, what should happen? We should redirect the user to product details.aspx page. So first of all, let's go ahead and include product details.aspx page. So let's name this product details.aspx. All right, so we have the destination page now. Now, you know, we need an event handler method associated with this link button. So on click of this link button, we want a method to be executed in, in the on the server. So we need to have an event handler method. So within the code behind file of this products.aspx page, we are going to have a event handler method. So let's make a copy of this one and then let's simply change the name of this one to link button one underscore click. So this is going to be the method which will be called on click of this link button. So let's associate that. So on click equals link button one underscore click. All right. So now let's actually write some ADO.NET code to retrieve data from SQL Server. So let's import the ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.data, system.data.sql client, and finally system.configuration. All right, so on the page load, if not is post back. So if it's not a post back, if it is the initial get request, first read the connection string. And for that, we are going to make use of configuration manager class. And that's the name of the connection string within the web.config file. Next, we want to create an instance of our SQL connection class. So let's call that con equals new SQL connection. And we are going to pass the connection string that we have just read from the web.config file. And next, we need our SQL command object. And this SQL command object is going to execute this stored procedure SP get basic product details. And then this SQL command is going to use that connection object to execute. Now this is a stored procedure, so command dot command type equals command type dot stored procedure. And this stored procedure doesn't expect any parameters to be passed. So now all that is left is to execute the command. So command dot execute reader. But before that we need to open the connection. So let's go ahead and do that. So connection dot open and whatever results uh, this command execution returns, we're going to set that as the data source for the grid view control and then call the data bind method. All right. Now, you know, this is going to display the data within the grid view control. So let's go ahead and run this and let's make sure it displays the data. Okay, all right, we have our data there. So when we click on this, at the moment, nothing is going to happen because we have not written uh, code to respond to that click event. So we'll do that in just a bit. First of all, uh, look at that. Why does it display ID name price, ID name price twice? Let's actually look at that. Let's see what the stored procedure is returning. So that stored procedure is returning just one set of ID name and price, but here we have that displayed twice. Let's look at the products.aspx page. So we actually want to turn that to false. We have set that to true. That's the reason. So we have the data as expected. Now let's quickly auto format this grid view control so that it looks a little nice. So let's auto format this and choose uh, maybe colorful scheme. All right. Now, within the code behind file, when we click that link button, we want to redirect the user to this page that is productdetails.aspx page. So let's copy that name and we are simply going to use response.redirect and we want to redirect the user to productdetails.aspx page and we want to pass the ID of the product as part of the query string. So question mark ID 
equals and we need to get the ID of the product on which the user has clicked. So how are we going to get that? So that's the tricky bit. So here the ID value is displayed at, you know, inside the link button. So if we can get hold of that link button inside the template field, our problem is solved. We can simply use the text property of the link button and then retrieve the product ID. So now you know, when we click that link button, which method gets executed? This is the method that gets executed. And if you look at this even handler method, there are two parameters. One parameter says, you know, object sender. So what is the sender parameter? So basically this is going to contain a reference to the control that has raised this event. Okay, so which is the control that has raised this event? It's the link button. So whatever we are going to receive as part of this parameter is going to be a reference to the link button. Okay, which means we can typecast that safely to a link button because we know that the control will ever go will come into this uh, event handler method only when the user clicks, um, you know, that link button. So what we can do here is typecast the sender to be of type link button and then retrieve the text property. It's as simple as that. So now this should redirect us to the destination page. So let's quickly look at that in action. So let's go ahead and run this now. And once we click on product ID 1, look at that. We are now redirected to product details to the SPX page and the ID of the product is passed um, you know, as part of the query string. Now all that is left is to use that product ID, call the other store procedure as we get product details by ID and then display that data uh, within label controls. So let's quickly do that. So first of all, let's go to product details.aspx page and we need to design this page. Now to speed things up, what I have done is I already have the HTML which is going to lay out some labels. So if you look at this uh, HTML, it's pretty straightforward. We have a table here and then this table has got several TRs and within each TR you have got a TD so it says ID there and then there's a label to display that ID value. So if you look at the design, it's going to be pretty straightforward. And basically we get that background color because I have set that as the light golden, um, you know, yellow color as the background color. Okay, so pretty straightforward HTML there. I'll have this HTML on my blog in case you need it. Okay, so now in the code behind file, so if not is post back. So if we land on this page, then we know that we are going to get that query string that is product ID. So first we need to retrieve that product ID. So string product ID equals request dot query string of what is the name of the query string? It is ID. Okay, so all that is left now is to write the ADO.NET code and to speed things up, let's actually make a copy of the code that we have already written. First of all, we need these three namespaces, so let's copy them and let's paste them right here. And let's go back to products.aspx page and then let's copy this piece of code. And within product details, so we want the connection string, we created the SQL connection object and we want to execute this stored procedure, SP get product details by ID. And that is a stored procedure, but that stored procedure expects a parameter to be passed, right? And at ID is the name of the parameter. So we need to create a SQL parameter as well. So SQL parameter, let's call this parameter. and we need to specify the name of the parameter and the value. So the name of the parameter is going to be at ID. And where is the value for ID? We are getting that from the query string. So let's pass that. And finally, we need to associate this parameter object with this command object. So command.parameters.add, we want to pass the parameter. All right and we open the connection, execute the command. Here we don't have a grid view control. So what we can do instead is store those results in a SQL data reader object and then
So while we are reading the data from the reader, so while adia.read, what we want to do is set the label values within product details page. So notice that the labels are named LBL ID, LBL name, LBL price. So we need to simply set their text properties. So LBL dot LBL ID dot text equals RDR of ID dot two string. So we need to do this for all the uh, columns that are returned. And to speed things up, I have typed that code as well already. So instead of making you see me type, let's copy and paste that there. So the same code. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. And another thing that we need to keep in mind, look at this one. When a user directly navigates to productdetails.aspx page, it throws this error, SP get product details by ID expects a parameter at ID which was not supplied. That's basically because when the user lands on this page, notice that there's no query string passed there. If there's no query string passed, what do you think is going to happen? It's actually, you know, this product ID will be null, right? So nothing gets passed to the database. And that's why we are getting that message. So, you know, if a user lands on this page and if there is no ID query string, you know, you want to redirect that user back to product details page. Um, if that's the case, you simply do a check here. So if the product ID is equal to now, then we will simply redirect the user back to products page. All right, so let's read on this page. Now product um, ID will be now look at that we get back to the products page now when I click on product ID one notice that we land on this page um, and we have that ID passed thank you for listening and have a great day